I have a cat here already. Maybe he'll want to hang out. Maybe he doesn't get tangled up in my headphones. No. <laughs> He's gonna immediately do. Funny. <laughs> can't even see him. Doesn't necessarily make it worthwhile. Anyways, starting up the stream. Last few streams I did have been all programming. This time, I'm gonna do, hopefully, some Nintendo Switch Con, Switch Joy-Con repair, because mine are uh, kind of busted. Maybe a cat will help, or maybe he'll hinder, who knows. Uh, I haven't taken these apart before, so I'm probably gonna start off with some Googling and some random looking around. Oh, your internet connection has been out, that sucks. Hopefully it's uh, back to stable for you. I work from home, so our internet connection is kind of essential. <laughs> Let's see, so what do I got here? I got um, got these things. Atomic purple is my favorite color of all things Nintendo ever. I got the uh, Atomic purple Game Boy Color back in the day. So I figured if I'm taking these things apart, I'm gonna put this on them while I'm at it. We got these uh, replacement joysticks, which hopefully, hopefully should help. They look, oh, I haven't even opened up the package yet. I looked at them online. I didn't realize that it came with these little uh, joystick covers. <laughs> those, are, those are cuter than I expected. Just expected some black things. Instead, apparently I have uh, Pink paw pads? <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to use that or not, but that might be fun for uh, putting on while playing Animal Crossing or something. It's kind of ridiculously adorable. Can you see it on that camera better? Yeah, I don't know. I'll keep those in the bag for now. We don't want to wreck them. I have taken a lot of things apart in my lifetime, so I can't imagine these Joy-Cons are going to be too hard to take apart, but I really like my Nintendo Switch, so I don't want to break it. What did I just drop? I think I dropped screws. Yep, I dropped the bag of screws. It's up for now, but the next storm will probably fry cabling if I've been through that before. Why does my internet suck? Oh, it's uh, fried cables that have been chewed through by squirrels and every other manner of critter. Uh oh. Well, I'm hoping these joysticks work for me. We'll see. If not, maybe I can console myself with uh, the purple color. Hey, kitty. Looks good. This is Catsby, by the way. He is blocking all my light. He's working. He doesn't come up on this desktop with his workbench all that often. His uh, stepbrothers are on here somewhere. Oh, there he is. Oh, well, there goes Cosmo. You don't have to stay up there anymore. I haven't made chiptunes in a long time. I need to get back to it. 
I was, actually how long ago I used to do it was mainly on the Commodore Amiga back in the day, but these days, I don't know. Actually, if there's something you just want to kind of play around with, this is kind of cool, I think. You can find, what is it, Beatbox? If you just kind of want to screw around with some chiptunes, this thing's kind of cool. Beatbox.co. Uh, it's neat to play around with for a few chiptune kind of things. A friend of mine was, what the heck was he using? He was uh, making NES tunes. That I've been meaning to get back to playing with. Yeah, Famitracker. I've heard this thing is pretty nice. Fun to play with. A lot of these things are kind of like... They're called trackers, and what that means is it's like a piano roll of data that it tracks through and that controls the sound. It takes a little bit to get to learn, but once you learn, you can do a lot of cool stuff with it. Famitracker's cool. It's on my to-do list to play with. Maybe I'll do it on stream sometime. Let's see. The first thing I should do... Pop this thing out of its case. That's the other thing, too, is I've got it in this case that, like, keeps the Joy-Cons on, because they've gotten kind of loose. This is a, a launch day switch, and it's gotten a lot of use. Let's see if I can pop it out of here without... wrecking anything. It's a pretty rigid, solid case. I've read if you don't do it right, it can kind of peel the back of the switch itself off. Which I don't want to do. This case has been on here for like six months. There we go. Oh, I see. You've been working on it. Oh, you've actually been... I see. You don't just want to screw around with a tracker. You want to... Excited about adding some music support. What would be fun? 50 theme of 80 ish, 16 bit micro. I would. Th if you're talking about like sound chips, one that I keep. There's two that I keep meaning to play with. One is. Um, what's the Vectrex have in it? AY38912. Sure. So yeah, I can turn my voice up a little more. I'm also kind of talking further away from the mic tonight, too. But yeah, I've been meaning to play around with this sound chip, which the Vectrex uses. But I think there exist emulators for it if you're looking to do it in code. I have not played with that yet, though. Also, I was taking notes the other night. Is this it? No. OPL? Yeah, this board is neat. The YM3812 OPL chip. So if I were to play with actual, like, sound hardware, or emulators thereof, I kind of got this sound chip and uh, closer to 16 bit would definitely be this um, YM3812. Are they the same chip? I'm actually the same one now. But yeah, this um, YM3812, I guess, is what was used in like Sound Blaster and FM synthesizers and stuff. So that might be fun to play with the hardware or play with the simulator of it or emulator of it. The Joy Cons still come off my Switch. Actually, that was the problem. They were coming off too easily. Oh, 
Okay, I just googled my CPU. Let's see what you're talking about. That's cool. Oh, I see. Okay, so this is kind of like a... Um, this isn't a, a, this is an emulator of a historical CPU. This is like a new virtual processor. That kind of stuff is cool. Like, I was playing around with um, Pico 8 for a while to make a few games and whatnot. That. That's cool. Yeah, something like uh, this Yamaha chip would be awesome for something like this, I think. Or something like it. Yeah, it is definitely exciting. Like, I, um, I don't know if you've seen, you probably have seen, if you're looking at this stuff, you have probably at least heard of Pico 8. Because it's got a built-in uh, tracker for music and whatnot. Which is, like, an interesting little editor for music, and it's usually pretty easy to implement, I think. So you can do... The hardware and the software can be pretty easy to, to build around it. It's just representing the, the, the triggers and everything for the sound chip. But yeah, that would be pretty cool. Let's see. I'm tempted to Google how to dismantle a Joy-Con. I'm also tempted to just do it because I've taken apart lots of things before. I guess the important thing is to make sure one of these screwdrivers I have is the appropriate one. Yeah, I've also been following... Actually, I think you might have mentioned it last time I saw you on my stream, which is um, Ben Eater's stuff around um, his breadboard computers and whatnot. Ooh, this doesn't seem to be the right screwdriver. And it's interesting to see some stuff that are like crosses back and forth between being virtual and then being actually implemented in real hardware. And, and also on my to-do list is to play around with um, FPGA boards, which you can basically generate hardware and software, which seems like black magic to me. Oh no. Wondering if I have the wrong size tri-wing screwdriver, which might end this adventure before I start. Oh wait, no. The, um, oh maybe not. I thought maybe the case came with the right tool. Yeah, Ben Eater 6502 Adventures. That one, his stuff seems really interesting to me because I grew up with the Commodore 64, so that's like kind of my jam as far as computers go. I have not seen inside an FPGA. You could you could probably convince me it is actually magic, and that there are little elves inside. Oh, oh. Chris, you Nintendo and your weird screws. I neglected to order screws their screwdrivers because I just assumed the toolkit I had bought would do the trick. I do have actually some stream soon if I start doing this on a schedule. I bought this thing for um for doing the Mr. thing for uh, simulating game hardware and stuff. I'm hoping to actually play with this from a development standpoint at some point. But until then, I'll, I'll play some cool games on it. Yeah, SID chip is awesome. If you want your uh, bleepy bloopy chip tunes, that's probably the gold standard, yeah. It's weird, there's like different levels of um, nostalgia around that. Chip tunes on 64 is one thing, then there's the, uh, the Amiga here, which is all samples and whatnot, and then there's things like FM synthesis with that Yamaha chip. I think there's like bands of nostalgia around all that. Alright, well, shoot, maybe I have some other screwdrivers that will work. I doubt it, though. Hopefully 
hopefully I can get one of my screwdrivers to work. Of course, I don't know if this, uh, oh, wait, maybe. I'm wondering if this um, iFixit kit comes with anything remotely useful. Maybe, I might be lucky. Of course, if you want to go for nostalgia overload, make a system that can do all three. Oh, this screwdriver works. Hooray, okay. Yeah, it might be cool to have a system that can do um, SID-like sound, Yamaha FM synthesis-like sound, and maybe play some samples. You can mix all of them. All right, let's move all this stuff over here. Song. Speaking of when I used to make music, this I made my freshman year at college in 1994. This is a terrible song. I should check that out. I should check out YCP. Uh, I'm not super familiar with emulation and whatnot, but I've been meaning to learn more about it. And hardware simulation and all that fun stuff. <laughs> Might be fun to program it at least. It's uh, got two threads and one is yours. Ah, I see. <laughs> there you are at the top. Is this still a thing? <laughs> Well, it's a thing if you make it a thing. And I guess if, if the appropriate people keep working on it. I need a dish to put screws and things in. I've got a lid. All right, Let's zoom in. So I got a screwdriver, looks like it's gonna work. Hopefully, I don't destroy this thing as I take it apart. Are these screws magnetic? Probably not. I really should Google how to do this, but I'm feeling brave. It's always fun to have um, super niche interests with very few people <laughs> in forums and whatnot. My problem is I have interests, and they don't last they don't stick long for any run of time, so I'll get really interested in the thing and then uh, get bored with it, move to something else, and then get interested in it again, like six months to a year later. <laughs> it's not enough time to like make friends with a community or something. And by the time I come back, everybody's like, who the heck are you? It's like, yeah, I'm that dude who, like, posted very intensively for, like, a two-month period, then vanished. Alright, so I got screws out. Yeah, this thing is looking pretty sad. Like, I'm rubbing the paint off bits of metal of this thing. Alright. Maybe I can use a little spudger to get it apart. Where did I just put... Oh, I put my toolkit over here. get the case apart. I'm also hoping not to like lose any parts. You have a hard time sticking with things, especially not active things. Yeah. I'll get like on a tear with a software project for a while and I'll do what feel like lots of cool things with it and then just like the next day, nope, I don't work on this anymore. And, uh, yeah, I'm not super great at making friends. Alright. 
Well, so that's what the innards of a Joy-Con look like, I guess. I'm trying to be really careful because there's some ribbon cables here. I wonder if I should unscrew that panel. It's trying to wake up now, too, which is... Sorry, little Joy-Con. So the joystick is, on this one is up here. I'm not going to need to get at it. Yeah, I have that experience too. I, I like make friends in a community and then wander off and then wander back and nobody remembers me. I'm kind of half hoping if I uh, do this stream thing consistently, at least I'll get people to virtually hang out in my basement with me. That sounds creepy. It won't work if you forget to put the battery back in. Good tip. I will probably do that, actually, since I say that. I see the battery is wired in. Actually, it says the battery soldered in. Oh, no, there's a tiny connector for the battery. Mm -hmm. Wondering if I should watch a video on this thing before I really start to take it apart. And also, if I'm going to replace the plastic shell, I am going to completely dismantle it. I'm also trying to keep it on camera, so that's at least interesting. You can watch what I destroy on my uh, treasured Joy-Con as I screw with it. I was going to order new Joy-Cons. They're more expensive than I'd like. You know what? I think I should probably switch to some goofy magnified glasses. This is tiny. Although, I could use the camera to help me. If I drag OBS over on my other screen, maybe I can look there. This is a terrible camera, though. Crack the case by using a match to break loose a screw. Oh, well, that's ideally not going to be a thing I do. Oh, looks like the battery's plugged in. Maybe I can unplug the battery. Yeah, there's got. I imagine there's probably a few things on here that are glued in. Hopefully not. You know what? Actually, I wonder if one of my favorite sites in the world, I Fix It, has a teardown guide of Joy Cons. Because that would be useful. I trust them for things. <laughs> I trust them for things. In fact, I own the toolkit for my fix it. So I'll look them up and see if uh, they can tell me about Joy Cons. They tend to do teardowns and things. What do you know? Nintendo Switch Joy-Con repair. That's what I'm looking for. So come along with me and read a web page. Yes, that's all right. I know you're open for business. Difficulty moderate steps 12. Time required 30 minutes. Eh, it doesn't sound too scary. I think I got the right screwdriver, left joystick, remove the four screws from the back panel of the Joy-Con. Done. I've already got the thing carefully opened. What do we do next? Insert a... Insert a pick at the seam at the bottom. Okay, well I figured that part out. I already used, uh... I used their exact pick to do it, so I guess I'm, uh... I'm in good shape already. Thanks, I fix it. Careful not to slide the pick too far inside the Joy-Con. That'll damage components, understood. Take it apart. Okay, well, I'm three steps in of 11. That's cool. What else did I say? Step four. Use a spudger to gently pry the battery connector straight up from its socket on the motherboard. Okay. So it doesn't pull out, it pulls up. Well, that's interesting. How well is the pick used for a guitar? It's not. It's very thin. This would not be good for a guitar. It's like, uh... Very, very... It's like thinner than a credit card. I don't... Well, I mean, I guess guitar picks are pretty thin, but I don't think I'd want to use that for a guitar. Um, so they want me to... 
pry that battery connector up. Hmm. Okay, well, let me look at that a little closer. Of course, I have never learned how to play guitar. I played piano and keyboard at one point. Let's see. Before I make myself and everyone on the camera, watching the camera vomit. Looks like... Does it pull straight up the can the battery cable's kind of in the way of my sight? I very carefully grab that wire and move it aside. So I guess that's a connector that pulls up. I would have expected it would pull to the right. Oh, well, if they say it pulls up, I, I guess it pulls up. All right. I kind of wish I was wearing my contacts because I want to use my, I uh, wasn't thinking ahead, I want to use my magnified glasses, which tend to only work when I'm wearing contacts. But, got some really thin pixie-like, not like you actually play enough to know if they're any good. Yeah, I don't know, I had, when I was in high school, I collected some guitar picks, but don't know why. <laughs> I never played with them. Okay, now I can't see anything. I definitely can't see chat. <laughs> yeah, this is a bad idea. I can't wear these and my glasses. Yeah, they're fun. I remember there was a there's somebody I knew that had bought a guitar pick punch. It was like some kind of tool that they could crank on a piece of plastic to punch out guitar picks so they could turn old credit cards and random things into guitar picks. Alright, well. So they say. Use a spudger. Pull straight up. <laughs> Alright, let's zoom in on that. Because, oh, I see, it just kind of like pulls straight up. Okay, I see how that, how that looks. And that looks like what I've got. Okay, so the battery thing on mine looks like that. Okay, it's recognizable. I'm looking at the wrong screen. <laughs> that sure is some Zelda. All right, so they said use a spudger. It is very tiny. I was wondering if I should use my tweezers instead of a spudger. The spudger is actually pretty thick to get in there. Let's see if I have a thinner tool. It looks very delicate in there. I bet you this is going to take a whole lot longer than a half hour for me to do. I don't think I want to use a metal tool because I don't want to screw up any of the metal parts in there. Hmm. My tweezers are also metal. Well, maybe it'll be alright, he says. Because he's about to destroy his uh, current favorite video game console. Yeah, alright. I see what they mean about spudger, because you want to get under there and pop it out. Maybe I can get that under there. I might have to do it close to my face and not show it on the camera. Unfortunately. Yeah, NES... I 
like NES sound. I especially like the like square wave bass sound that they had. You probably can't see this at all on camera. I should probably wear like a face mounted camera if I really want to show this stuff off. Oh, I see. I think they they want me to put the sponger under the cable. plug the stream into my brain yeah that's um that's an advanced stream topic they have planned for probably 2077 there it goes okay so it just um yeah so i just put the spudger into there and it uh popped out a little socket there and yes didn't have enough bits started getting good when they put in the bit doubler there was actually there were some sounds on NES that were good, and the reason why they were good, you might know this, was because it didn't use the NES's sound chip. Like, uh, this is an NES game that I think sounds pretty good, but it had a special external sound chip in the cartridge, which is kind of crazy to me. All right, so I got the power out of there. You can't see that. It's very exciting to just look at my uh, green workbench. Okay, where are we on these instructions? Yeah, I forget what the name of the audio chip was. That would be a fun one to, to have in some kind of retro system too. I mean, that was the cool thing about cartridges. Even though they were more expensive, you could put more hardware on them, so if the uh, game system started to get a little long in the tooth, you could actually expand it. Alright, I'm on step four. I took the battery connector out. Okay. Insert a pick between the battery and the Joy-Con housing. Okay, so it's taped in there. Let's see about that. Hopefully I don't destroy it now. I'm going to say this at like every freaking stage. Like, I am going to destroy this. But hopefully not. So they said the, the battery is lightly taped in. Let's see if I can get that out of there. It helps that I'm looking at, um... I'm looking at iFixit and I'm using their actual tools. So that's kind of cool. Alright, I think I feel it moving. They said it's just taped. They said it's just taped, so I'll believe them. I'm a little afraid if I put too much force, I'm going to fling it over my shoulder. An opening pick, not a closing pick or a midday pick, yeah. Fifta. Get out there. I think I have made contact with the tape. Oh, come on, you bugger. I'm also superstitious about lion batteries, lithium ion batteries. Oh, there's the tape. It's just in the corner. Okay. So, it's not adhered anywhere in here. There's just a little bit of tape in the corner. I was expecting it to be, like, pretty well glued in there. All right, well, let's very carefully peel it out of there. Oh, yeah, it's literally just the corner of the battery. Jiminy. Oh, I see. Well, yeah, it's just a little tab of double stick tape. Okay, I was expecting a lot more resistance. So let's put that somewhere safe. Then, and I will try to remember to put it back in. Okay. What next? Oh, interesting. I wondered how that worked. So under here... There's some metal contacts I haven't seen before. I'm wondering if that's what gets connected in the Wii, or I mean the Switch. I 
Oh yeah, I hadn't seen that before. There's like a little, uh, I did, for some reason I thought this was wireless, but I can see, I don't know if you can see, maybe you can see the reflection of it down here at the bottom of the Joy-Con track. There are little, oh, how do we do this while looking at the camera? Anyway, there are little copper contacts down there. I didn't know those were there. That makes sense. That's how it charges. And I guess connects. Very tiny, though. That makes sense why it's, um, the connection is so finicky. All right, where are we? So I got the battery out. Be careful not to deform or puncture the battery. It can catch fire or explode if it's damaged. That's why I'm superstitious about those batteries. All right. Remove three batteries. Or batteries. Three screws. Okay. My picture looks a lot like theirs. Looks like they want me to remove dot, dot, dot. Oh, but they're Phillips. They're not tri-wing. So I need a new screwdriver head. Interesting. Let's see which one of those I need. Uh, Chris. Can't see for crap. Okay, maybe this is it. Helps to have all my tools nearby. Is that sufficient? Is that gonna work? I think that's gonna work. Alright, get that. So looks like you want that screw, that screw, and that screw. So Am I magnetic? No, we're not magnetic. Oh we are magnetic. Cool. Oh, Blaster Master. This is one of my favorite games ever. I was really happy when I saw that a reboot of it had come out for Nintendo Switch. I jumped right on that. And then a sequel to the reboot, which I feel sad because I haven't finished. Oh yeah, now my lamp is in the way of the uh, other camera. Oh well, we can move it in a second. But you can see on this camera what I'm doing. Okay, I'm trying to be very careful. What next? Do not attempt to remove the mid-frame yet. There's a fragile cable that still connects the ZL, bu ZL button on the mid-frame to the motherboard underneath. Okay, fair enough. What should I do next then? Carefully flip the mid-frame over. Away from the motherboard as if you were turning the page of a book. Do your best not to stress the thin ribbon cable attached to the ZL button during this step. Uh, caution warranted. All right. So the mid-frame would be this, right? I see, I see, I see. So the ribbon cable they're talking about is right here. This ribbon cable right here. It looks like I'm gonna need to be super careful with it. Well, here we go. Oh, I see. So it, it folds over and runs under, just like they were saying. Okay, so there we go. I'm trying not to stress it. Oop. Try not to stress it. Just let it sit. Looks like it plugs in. I don't want to pick up the whole assemblage anymore, because now I'm like, trying to be careful. Yeah, alright. So it looks like it runs from here. It runs into the board there. So let's not break anything. Cool, I fix it people, what next? 
Step 8. The ZL button cable is locked in place by a small ZIF connector on the motherboard. Use tweezers or a spudger to flip up the ZIF connector. Zero force insertion. Or zero in force insertion. Blah, 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 blah. Zero insertion force connector opposite the cable. Okay. Use tweezers to gently pull the ZL button flex cable out of the ZIF connector socks. The midframe is now disconnected and can be removed. Okay. I really wish I had magnify glasses for this part. And this camera sucks. I need a better camera for this close-up stuff. What I really want is a microscope that I can like look at the screen on and stream microscope. So it wants me to unlock this. Maybe I can get even closer with this stupid camera. Maybe not so much light, maybe more light, maybe the bright white of the component is kind of blowing things out. Okay. This is kind of the opposite end of the repair spectrum from the last Joy-Con you watched. One of the matches I'm trying to improv grown-up tweezers and scissors and stuff. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to use, like, some nice fine tweezers. I want to take my time. It says a half hour on the iFixit site, but I'm probably going to take, like, two hours. I'm going to get in there real close and see if I can do this without lifting the whole thing up. Did they say this needs to... Oh, I didn't, I'm flipping the wrong thing. I'm trying to move the white part. It's the black part that needs to move. There we go. I think I got it flipped. ZL button is free. Nice. They hopefully didn't kill it. These things are made for kids, but I'm guessing they're not made for kids to open up. So, you know. What next? Okay, Use tweezers to gently pull the ZL flex button. ZL flex cable out of the socket. The midframe is now disconnected and can be removed. I did that. So, step 9 of 11 from what I could read. Okay. Ribbon cable connecting the minus button of the Joy-Con motherboard runs over the back of the joystick. It is possible to remove the joystick without disconnecting the cable, but it's much easier to do when it is disconnected now. Okay, so I need to unhook another one of these. And it looks like mm, this one. I'm gonna use my plastic piece for that again. Maybe I should use the, the little chip. A little pick. I think I flipped it. Did I flip it too hard? Does it flip back down later? Yeah, it looks like it'll flip back down. Okay. I hope. Hope I didn't break it. Did I flip the wrong thing? No, no. Wait. Yes? No, yeah, no, 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 that's correct. So I want to carefully take this out. Maybe I didn't unlock it. No, I did. Okay, good. So now the minus button is disconnected. Step 10. Finally, the joystick is locked in place by one last ZIF connector. Okay, so that's the one I haven't done yet. That'll be... 
Oh, yeah, this is what I'm bringing out. Oh, hello. Chip machine crash. Hmm. Need to play around with my favorites. These tweezers are better than the ones you have. This was actually a pretty um, cheap tweezer set. It wasn't, it, well, it was a, uh, it was part of a dedicated tweezer set, so it wasn't like a generic toolkit. They're really sharp. If you ever get some of these, be very careful because if you, you can see my finger, you can see the tweezer. They're basically hypodermic. And they come with little rubber caps. If you ever get these tweezers, do not lose the rubber caps. They are very important because I have stabbed them into my palm before and uh, you know it when that happens. Oh, and I almost dropped, oh. <laughs> I dropped it. I dropped it and I have foam on my floor and it's now like sticking into the foam. So yeah, they're kind of dangerous. At least they're, they're short. So you're not gonna like use them for home defense or anything. Yeah, that's a good, like, it's good to get a general toolkit like that and see what you need and maybe over time upgrade some of your tools if and when you get the, the time and opportunity and money. It's all just time and money, you know. Okay. So now I'm stalling because now I gotta flip that. Okay. I take that cable out. This is a cool song. You just had one thing to solder. Yeah. I, for the longest time, managed with a. Oh, geez. $15. 15 American dollar Radio Shack soldering iron. Ooh, that's resisting a bit. And I use that for all kinds of things. Repaired a couple arcade machines with it. Until finally, one day, I decided to get like a nicer Hako. What is this? Hako FX. 888D soldering iron, it's all fancy. But that was probably like 20 years after I got that Radio Shack one. There we go, okay. Joystick cable is free. I was a little worried about that. It did not take zero force. What next? I fix it. Okay, step 11. Remove the two Phillips screws. Okay. So that's gonna be dot and dot. It's zero, ins <laughs> zero insertion force, not zero extraction force. Good point. Good point. This guy, Sidewinder, this is an Amiga mod. This guy apparently is back in the studio. This, this, is, a, this is an Amiga mod from like the 90s and rave times and all that. He's coming out with another album soon, apparently. And he was one of my favorite Amiga mod dudes back in the day. Oh no, no, don't, don't come off. There's a, there's a button with a screw that's coming off. I don't wanna look, I have had screws fly across the room before and never find them again. Alright. You should have told me to be careful about that spring. Okay. Dang you, I fix it in your free helpful advice, not telling me every single thing. Prodigy jam session? Oh! Hey, look, the joystick's coming out. There we go. Okay, well, so if you haven't seen it before and you're interested, this is what a Switch Joy-Con joystick looks like removed from its nest. 
I'm thinking this might be the one that's been annoying me with all the drift. <laughs> oh, by the way, there's a spring in there to take care of it. Yeah, yeah, that's probably what I'm going to find. All right, so I was careful, but this is not too bad. This is actually not too bad. Now, I can bring in from my mess of a workbench. These are the replacements. Actually, there's no light. If I, I've been meaning to bring things closer to the nice camera, because the nice camera is the one I'm barely using. So the nice camera is my Logitech, whatever the hell. This close-up camera is a $20 camera bought from Amazon. So everything you're seeing here is from a $20 webcam. Yeah, I'm hoping that the, the drift problem can be fixed by fully replacing the joystick. So, alright. This is, so... This is curious. So, the replacement part... Oh, this is too close. The original part is on the right. The replacement part is on the left. Um, yeah, 